Just get your partner on their back. Real simple. I'm in side control. We don't need to do anything yet. Just put your hand under the neck. Make sure it's not shallow. Make sure it's kind of deep. And then just bring this hand inside and lock a palm to palm, okay? Left palm has to be down, right palm's up. Slide my right elbow, drop it towards this direction. I'm gonna lean my shoulder towards his chest. So I have to make sure that my elbow can never be pushed out. So once I get it here, if I have space, like right now, there's a gap from my chest to his chest. He could push my elbow out or, or pull with his left hand and, and I won't be able to get it. So the moment you drop your elbow here, I lower my chest to his chest, towards his chest. And now what happens is if he's trying to pull that arm out, I have sufficient weight that he can't do that. He can't pull it with his left hand. He can't push it with his right hand. And now all I do is I just lower my right elbow towards the mat like this. I'm trying to put my elbow towards the mat, okay? I'm not trying to pop his head off. So I don't wanna lift his head and do this right here. I wanna just put my chest down and I'm just dropping my elbow. Your grip obviously needs to be strong um, to a degree. I'm very relaxed right now. I'm not, we're not fighting, but the grip needs to stay strong, but it's really not the, the squeezing and you know, that you got this like turning of the wrist. Just think about like scissors. Take your right elbow and make scissors by bringing your elbow down towards your left elbow. Okay, one more time, super simple, just to warm up. My hands underneath, don't worry about the defense yet. Just here, drop my elbow, put my shoulder on his chest. This is probably the most challenging part. Something about me that's really super weird is my elbow goes all the way across and I can put my elbow in my own armpit. See that? Most people do this and they're Elbow goes to like where? Carlos, go ahead, show off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, try to put your elbow in your armpit. No, no, the other armpit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, even somebody skinny, no offense. But you see where his elbow, see where his elbow ends up? It's kind of moving across, it's pretty good. It's pretty Not good. As as coach. Yeah. You're all but, the way to But guys, back. look, look at my elbow. <laughs> see, like, grab your elbow and then pull it all the way across. But I'm not pulling it across like I'm doing this stretch. I'm pulling it down here. You see how far my elbow goes? So I want it to go all the way over and get in my own armpit. Yeah, that's ideal. Okay, so here, my hand's under, my right palm's up, so I have a cut with this ulna right here, palm to palm. Elbow goes down and my, see how, when I go here, my right elbow's in my armpit, I just drop my right elbow that way. My grip doesn't even need to be strong to practice this. Okay, obviously you're gonna make a strong grip in a real situation, okay? So practice the mechanics of it. Some people, when they do this, they circle, they go towards the head. You know, they try to make a, try to make a move like this over here. I personally don't like that. You see the space that my, my shoulder's not towards his chest. I'm not focusing on trying to do this. I wanna keep my shoulder here so it's on his chest. So when there's movement now, as he moves around, there's nowhere to go. I can just drop that elbow. Sorry about that, Jeremy. Right. Okay, everybody understand? Right, Let's try it, one, two, three. Baseball choke, bad rub. Okay. okay, so Jeremy's on his back. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start in the mount, okay? This is, uh, again, a, a spot where a lot of guys aren't gonna see what you're doing, okay? I can have my hand around his neck like normal, like we always kind of looking for this grip, okay? I put a, a shoulder in his neck. This is where I start to look like I want this classical attack where we want to look for arm triangles and things like that. So this hand's not going to be in. I'm going to have something like this, okay? As I have my base, you notice my left hand's around the neck. Do you see the baseball choke? Okay, it's the same as side control. 
Remember when I was in side control? I was here and we went like this. Now I'm in mount, that's the only difference. But the cool thing is your opponent won't see it. They don't see baseball choke from here. They think walk, arm triangle, maybe slide up, look for the arm bar. So they're gonna be thinking about those things. So while I'm doing this, I wanna do these things. I wanna make him think I want this. He clamps the elbow and I just close the elbow down so I can't walk I'm gonna, like this. Yeah, look, don't, don't let me. Yeah, very good. So look, I, I, try, I make him think about it. I bring my hand through. See, I brought it through. Now look, I'm gonna go all the way elbow through. And now I'm over his arm. I gave him an underhook, basically. And now my elbow shuts. This is how I set up for our punch choke. Okay, no gi Ezekiel. But just as easy, now with his hand out of the equation, I'm gonna start setting up our baseball choke. If I have my hooks in with my feet, I'm gonna start getting them out because I gotta prepare to move. So I'm in this position. I'm just kind of controlling them and holding, closing my elbow here. I'm gonna lean my butt forward so I can swivel my right foot like a windshield wiper. Boom, come off to knee on belly. And then again, all the way through this, my elbow is in. See, so my elbow's close to my body. If he's trying to get this hand out, I'm like kind of controlling it. He's gonna pop it out when he wants. He may try to like go to push my knee, that's fine. I drop, I make the grip. See the grip come in? And then I'm gonna kick off this knee on belly and drop right into position and it's done, okay? So what's important about this is that we're using the mount to stop his defense, which is mostly his hands, okay? So again, if you started in the mountain, you were here and his hands were on your hips or something. As I drop down on top, I make sure this hand isn't like this. If his hand is here, I gotta swim and get to here. Get that connection, okay? I gather his neck. I'm looking to pummel his arm like I want his arm, right? But I really don't. Now he's thinking I want his arm, okay? All I do is I just get his arm out of the equation. I can do it like this, like I just did right now. Or if his hand was a little bit more high, like this, swim. And now it's there, okay? Now I'm ready to go. You see the baseball choke? Mm -hmm. I just gotta get my elbow in. So now look, I'm gonna prepare the legs, swivel off. Sometimes I gotta lean my butt, just so hips go a little forward. If you're sitting back, you go like this, you're like, uh-oh, he captures quarter guard. You know what I mean? He's gonna capture that leg. So, butt comes forward, swivel off, elbow comes in, and now, even if he tries to grab my wrist right now, my elbow goes in, he grabs the wrist, lean my shoulder. Shoulder leans to the chest, history. I was just working with a group over here. Look at my, my knife. It's cutting his head off. Don't move your lock so much that your knife is going at this angle. I'm cutting at that direction. I'm gonna cut straight right here. His head's on the chopping block, and then we, bam. You guys remember the tomahawk chop? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy's old enough. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, it was a Braves? Yeah, Braves. Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Tomahawk chop. Okay, anyway, now we got to upset the Native Americans. Calm down. <laughs> here we go. Shoulder, and boom. Okay. Damn, did you realize I brought up the tomahawk chop and their baseball team? Yeah. Let's go, guys. Baseball chop. Baseball chop. One, two, three. I didn't even notice when I did it. It's not. Relax everything else. We used to fight and love. Fight and love. He's like, this is the first time. Now, stop. Leave this here. Uh -huh. Fall this way and now squeeze. See that? Yes. Don't, I can already tell when, when I moved you, uh -huh. you wanted so bad to move this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Put it here. Now leave here. Now just cut his neck. It's so easy. Yeah. Stabilize, don't choke him, don't choke him. Hold him. Okay. You can squeeze this without that. Yeah. You can keep that snug without that. Uh -huh. Hold the shoulder, stabilize the base, move around, Carlos, hold him, don't choke him. 
Just hold it. Now squeeze them anytime you like. You're a champion. Yeah. You're a champion! <laughs> yeah! And don't let me move. Stabilize, squeeze. Finish. Dip down, squeeze, lock. At the end, you got it. So, you guys have to get in these positions. Have your partner move. Don't let them move. Don't choke them. Just, like, you're gonna choke them, but you're gonna choke them slow. Don't pop their head off. Don't try to do too much. Because if you're trying to do too much, you can win with power. But you match someone your same level, they're gonna fight you and they're gonna get out. So we gotta work on that, but lay in your back real quick. Guys, just get here, get in a baseball choke and just ask your partner to move, move. Anytime I want, I just drop my elbow. I just drop my elbow, bam. So we've got to stabilize our balance. That's why I don't want you guys to do this, to do like this. See, I switch my hip. This could choke a guy, but if he starts moving, starts sitting up, start moving. See, I lost my balance. If I lose my balance, I have to then get on top. And even if I don't let go of the choke, I still have to get on top with my choke, and that's gonna buy him time. That's movement that he's gonna, it's gonna relieve the pressure for a quick moment. And I'm not saying one quick half a second gets him right back to normal. Like let's say it, it takes, think of it like this, like it's like two and a half, three seconds, just call it three, even though it could be less. Two to three seconds of choking puts somebody unconscious. If you get to the, right before, it's like the two count, right? You're about to get the pass out. And one little movement relieves pressure that allows flow of the blood, and then what happens? Let's imagine, I, again, I can't say exactly what it is, but let's say it puts him back to normal. You're now, in other words, your count started again. You're back at zero. And now you're squeezing him again for another two seconds. And then you're getting right close to the choke, and he makes one move that relieves the pressure, and now he's back to zero again. So that's constantly happening, and that's why we need consistency in the choke. Stabilization good balance. A slow choke is much better. We don't need power. We don't need, of course, I, I used to talk about it, man. I used to talk about, man, just it, the, the fear of God in this dude, just, you know, you make a guy so scared, he just taps. That works, but it's not a good strategy for the long run. It's not good for safety in the room. People get hurt that way. And then as well, your technique doesn't improve because everything you do, you just think, I just gotta go hard. It's like when guys are getting pumped up for like a lift or like an explosive lift or an arm wrestling match. If they, you know, if a guy's not super technical, they get ready for an arm, rah, rah, let's go, wham! That's just all it is. And instead of being technical, you know, having a plan. When you guys get in there, I want you guys smart and technical, okay? Take your time. It doesn't have to be strong. Slow it down. The guy should not be able to move. And then you use less energy. And that way, if it's not right, you shrug your shoulders and you move on. You don't waste all your energy on something like this. If it's right, it should be light. If it's right, it's gonna be light. It's gonna be easy. If it feels real heavy and strong and muscly, just let it go. Move on or adjust and make it light. Let's go, one, two, three. Light is right.